Hello guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel Being Engineer. Today I have brought to you another frequently asked question. Why SFT and BMD is important? This is the most important question usually asked in the interviews and job interviews and in uh, recruitment test etc. So being engineer you must know why SFT and BMD is important and what is the need of SFT and BMD so in this video we are going to find answer to these questions so you are requested to watch the complete video till end so that you can get the answers of these frequently asked questions the next question is what SFT and BMD depicts it's mean that what SFT and BMD shows we will also discuss the reinforcement details from SFT and BMD that how we can provide economical economically reinforcement to cater these shear forces and bending moments so let's get started to know about the importance of shear forces and bending moments one must know what are shear forces and bending moments so shear force and bending moments are the internal forces of resistance developed within the member to withstand external applied load this internal force of resistance purely depend on the size of the member in order to become stable the total internal force developed should be equal to or more than the force experienced by applied loads that is external force by analyzing shear force and bending moment we can decide which section has the capacity to withstand external forces due to applied loads now going towards the importance of sfd that is shear force diagram and bending moment diagram shear force diagram and bending moment diagram is used to analyze the beam these diagrams indicates the shear force and the bending moments resisted by the beam section along the length of the beam shear force and bending moment diagrams are analytical tools used in conjunction with the structure analysis help in performing structural design by determining the value of shear force and bending moment at given point of an element these diagrams help in determining type size and strength required for structural member of a given material what is the need of shear force diagram and bending moment diagram as shear force diagram and bending moment diagram is used to analyze the beam shear and moment diagrams are graphs which show the internal shear and bending moment plotted along the length of the beam they allow us to see where the maximum loads occur so that we can optimize the design to prevent failures and reduce the overall weight and cost of the structure in my previous videos i have discussed in detail that how to draw shear force diagram and bending moment diagram i used the section method in which i cut the sections at every point to determine the maximum shear force and maximum bending moment is i have told you here that shear and moment diagrams are graphs which show the internal shear and bending moment plotted along the length of the beam so as you can see here here is the maximum positive shear and here we have a maximum negative shear here we have a maximum bending moment and here we have a zero bending moment that is point of contraflexure beams are structural elements primarily designed to support vertical loads when designing a beam it is important to locate the points of maximum shear as i have told this is the point of maximum shear and the maximum moment this is the point of maximum moment by using this method that is section method which i have explained in my previous videos that how to draw shear force and bending moment diagram the description of that video is given in the description or you can simply click on the i button appearing on the right corner right top corner of your video 
for designing it is important to locate the points of maximum shear and maximum moment and their magnitudes because that's where the beam is most likely to fail to find these weak points we need to check the internal loading at every point along the beam's full length as i have discussed in this section method how to determine the maximum internal loading at every section or at every point of a beam along the full length of the beam Now the next question is what shear force diagram and bending moment diagram depicts The bending moment and shear force diagram play a very important role in the arrangement of steel bars To know the critical position that is concrete section subjected to tension as an indeterminate beam would be subjected to both negative and positive bending moments so without the diagram you would not know that where to provide reinforcement in the concrete section top or bottom that is without knowing that which section of the beam has negative or positive moments so without diagram you would not be able to know where to provide reinforcement in the concrete section number second where the beam needs to be reinforced heavily and where do you start lightening it third point is where to stop steel bars and where to provide lap splicing the shear force diagram is also critical for determining the magnitude and location of the critical shear stress so you don't provide the same shear reinforcement throughout the whole span of the beam so again these three points are of very much importance that should be kept in mind that where to provide reinforcement in concrete section where the beam needs to be reinforced heavily and where do you start lightening it where to stop steel bars and where to provide lap splicing so without shear force diagram and bending moment diagram you would not be able to determine these sections of the beam now going towards reinforcement details from sfd and pmd that how sfd and pmd tells us where to provide lap splicing where to provide positive steel where to provide negative steel let's suppose we have a overhanging beam this is the best example because in our overhanging beam we have both negative moment positive moment negative shear and positive shear so it is the best example to explain the reinforcement details which the uh, shear force diagram and bending moment diagrams explains us here we can see that in the overhanging portion the the top portion of the beam experiences tension whereas bottom portion of the beam here is the negative moment as we go towards the center of the beam there is a positive moment which is the maximum bending moment and again towards the end of the beam that is in the overhanging portion the top fibers experiences tension and here is the negative moment if we see the shear force diagram the shear force is maximum as you can see here this is the positive maximum shear near the support of the beam and maximum negative shear near the support of the beam and it becomes zero at the center of the beam that is shear force is zero at the center of the beam and at that place the bending moment is maximum so again if we proceed towards the support the shear force become maximum that is positive shear and that is maximum negative shear so what does this shear force diagram and bending moment diagram tells us about the reinforcement let's proceed as we as discussed in the previous slide that top fibers experience tension in overhanging portion similar is the case of in the cantilever beam the top fibers experience tension and bottom fibers experience compression and shear forces uh, shear cracks are more likely to appear near the supports of the beam and bending moment is more likely to bend or fail the beam in the mid span of the beam if we see at the reinforcement details that steel is provided for 
tension concrete is already stronger in compression so we don't do not need to provide over reinforcement in the compression zone so we are only focused on the tension zone and the in overhanging portion type fibers experience tension so we provide extra steel on the top side of the beam similarly in the case of overhanging or cantilever beam so as we proceed towards the center here's the as, as we saw in the previous slide that a bending moment is maximum in the center of the beam so, so flexural reinforcement is to be provided in the center of the beam and shear reinforcement in the form of ties or stirrups have close spacing near the supports of the beam because shear cracks are likely to appear near the supports of the beam as you can see over here on this side that the steel is provided for tension because in our hanging portion or cantilever beam tension appears to be on the top of the on the top fiber of the beam so this is the tension reinforcement to be provided on the top of the overhanging portion of the beam reinforcement details can only be obtained from shear force diagram and bending moment diagrams i hope you have understand why to draw or what is the important of shear force diagram and what does shear force diagram and bending moment diagram tells us in the end you are requested to please like and subscribe the channel and don't forget to press the bell icon to get more videos like this